Has anyone ever told you that letting your kids watch TV to learn languages will not work? Well, let me tell you the story of how this professor brought back my faith in television when it comes to teaching my children languages. All right, everybody, welcome to Ask Tetsu, where we unlock the world's opportunities for our children by teaching them languages. My name is Tetsu. I've been raised in many languages, and today I am raising my own four kids in five languages. If you're new here, I urge you to subscribe and follow their language development journey. When I was a kid, I grew up in Taiwan. My father is Taiwanese, so I spoke Mandarin with him. And my mother is Japanese, so I naturally spoke Japanese with her. And living in Taiwan, she was the only live source of Japanese input for me. However, she worked a lot at the university, and uh, th the direct input from her was somewhat limited in that sense. But she was determined to, to get me to speak Japanese, so she rented these videos. I mean, yes, rent videos. Remember that? <laughs> she got all these popular cartoons in those days. I mean, we're talking 70s, 80s, okay? And I was watching things like Doraemon, Gachaman, you know, Lupin the Third. These were all popular cartoons in Japan uh, in, in those days. I mean, some of them are still alive today. And uh, I basically spent hours devouring these, day in and day out. And when my mom had the time, she, you know, we'd watch them together. Sometimes we'd watch some of her uh, Japanese drama series and, and variety shows. So it's undeniable that TV has played an essential part in my childhood to allow me to speak native level Japanese today. And then later in life, TV would again play a crucial role when I learned Spanish. I mean, I had learned some elementary Spanish traveling around on my own after I graduated from high school, so during my university years. But I also watched a lot of TV during, uh, during those years in the residence and, and where we had this one channel it was called uh, the Univision, and uh, I remember just spending hours watching Sabado Gigante with Don Francisco, or talk shows with Cristina, and uh, <laughs> it was this soap opera that I really loved, you know, soap opera, it's called Telenovela, uh, it was called Mi, Ke Mi Pequeña Traviesa, so if you're a Mexican or, or South American, I think a lot of you would know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I mean, it's a little embarrassed to say, but oh well. However, a few years ago when I was just beginning to really think seriously about spreading my, my word, my knowledge on raising bilingual and multilingual kids, a few things shook my confidence in, t in you know, preaching about uh, using TV as a legitimate source of input. Th there was a point where I was even you know, getting very, very careful about uh, talking about TV uh, during my presentations and my public appearances. And one thing that, that, was, that was sort of key in that, that change of heart was, uh, was this TED talk by a professor called Patricia Kuhl uh, from, I think, Washington State University. Her talk was called The Linguistic Genius of Babies. And honestly, it was a phenomenal pr presentation and I highly recommend it, so I'll link it in the description below. I recommend you take a look. Um, it was really nice. It began, I was nodding in agreement with pretty much everything that uh, Dr. Kuhl was, was saying, you know, the crit critical period hypothesis, you know, babies taking statistics on the intricate pronunciations of different languages like the R and L in English versus Japanese, etc. Until she showed this data. Um, this, this data is from an experiment that showed that American babies under one year of age could distinguish man Mandarin sounds just as well as Taiwanese babies if, if only you gave them a few training sessions, I guess, in the pronunciation. And uh, that in of itself, it's a nice result. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, it's hunky dory. But it's after this next data, that she, data point that she showed is that if you do these training sessions through TV, in, in other words, if you, have, if you record these sessions and then played, played it back to the, to the baby, then, then the baby couldn't differentiate the, the Mandarin pronunciations uh, that she was trained to do. So that, that was a shocker. I mean, why would there be a difference between babies uh, getting the input from a human uh, versus getting an input from 
you know, through a, a TV screen. I, I didn't know. But, but it, it really shocked me at that time. And, and after that, I, I don't know, I just started noticing uh, negative things, you know, headlines like this one uh, or, or this one. And before you know it, I, I found myself not speaking so loudly about TVs anymore in public. But still, deep inside, I mean, I still believed in TVs because I know my own experience. I may be just uh, an anecdote to, to everybody else, but for me, it was very real. I know how I learned Japanese. I know how the effect that TV had uh, on my Spanish. So I was determined and I decided that my children will uh, be able to watch TV in different languages and these cartoons from different countries so that you know they could benefit from TVs. I mean, I, I think they would. And so I, I let them watch uh, you know, all these popular cartoons here like Paw Patrol, you know, Dora the Explorer, Peppa Pig, Thomas the Train. I mean, we all know these. Or Japanese cartoons like Doraemon, Anpan Man, you know, Inai Inai Ba. <laughs> and the list goes on. Uh, and what's really nice in today's world is that you could get your hands on, on these cartoons in different languages on Netflix, YouTube, DVDs. Just search and you'll find. So if you come to our home on any given day, you may catch our kids watching, like, Paw Patrol in Mandarin. Or Doraemon in Spanish. So, what I'd like for you to notice is how the kids are really absorbed uh, and, and focused while they're watching. I mean, regardless of the language in which the, the, the cartoon is in. So, I want you to hold this thought uh, a little bit while I continue my story. I'll come back to, to it a little bit later. Then in 2017, I had the tremendous honor of meeting Professor Stephen Krashen. He had accepted to come, to come give the keynote lecture at a language event that I co-organized called Langfest. If you've never heard of Dr. Krashen, well, just know that he is like the most cited applied linguist in the world. So essentially, he is the Michael Jordan of the linguistics universe. In the 70s and 80s, Dr. Krashen came up with the concept of compelling and comprehensible input. In a nutshell, people, well, so adults and children, learn a new language only when it is comprehensible and compelling. That means the message that is heard or read, you know, the input, must be understandable, which means you have the ability to learn it. And also, it has to be compelling. And this means that you would have the interest to learn it. And he mainly advocates these uh, in, in reading stories and, and whatnot. But at this presentation at Langfest, uh, which I'll link, link up in the description, it's pretty interesting. He told us the story about Vincent, uh, the son of a Hong Kong immigrant couple that came to the U.S. Now, within the family, they spoke Cantonese, which is the language spoken in Hong Kong. But uh, just like my parents, they worked a lot, they were very busy, so they hired nannies to take care of Vincent. Now, when, when, she, and she, when she would come, she would put on these TV shows and cartoons in Mandarin, not Cantonese, uh, for Vincent to watch. And sometimes she would sit down and watch with him uh, and help him understand uh, as needed. And Vincent's parents also apparently would rent uh, TVs, uh, would rent movies and, and have these movie nights over the weekends and watch uh, with Vincent uh, things in Mandarin, you know, these different programs. Uh, maybe it's because there were more uh, programs in Mandarin, or maybe they in, you know, intentionally wanted Vincent to learn Mandarin. That I don't know. And, uh, but regardless, with extensive exposure through TV, Vincent was able to learn to speak Mandarin fluently. And the bottom line is, Cartoons and all these, you know, different children's programs are exactly the type of ideal input that Dr. Krashen talks about. Comprehensible and compelling. So no wonder the kids are glued to the screen. Remember what I said earlier about my kids? Really focused. They're basically glued to the screen. So, what's up with Dr. Kuhl's data and the various headlines that I, that I, was, that I was seeing? Well, after a little bit more Googling, I've come to realize that Dr. Kuhl, Dr. Kuhl never really said that TV was not good altogether. Her data uh, showed that it is not effective in babies under one year old. Or one year old. 
Well, I mean, obviously, at that age, they're not really comprehending a lot. So, her data simply showed that American babies were not able to distinguish the sounds in Mandarin if the learning sessions were via TV. Um, and so, the same goes for the other headlines. If I dig a little bit more, it turns out that a lot of these were, uh, you know, speech therapists stating the obvious, like babies need a certain level of life experience in order to learn to understand the world around them before they can appreciate, I guess, understand uh, the messages that are thrown their way. So to understand TVs would be a very difficult and, and quite ineffective way for babies to learn language. So I guess I, I agree. <laughs> I, I would say that kids maybe need to be at least two or three years of age before TV can become effective and useful. So to summarize, I think it is safe to say that TVs can actually help your children learn languages. That said, I think another key message that we really need to draw from this is that, you know, watching TV is nice, it's good, but you must find programs that are right for your children's age and interest. Comprehensible and compelling. And uh, if we also take Dr. Kuhl's teachings about the human aspects uh, of language acquisition, then I would also advise against completely outsourcing language learning to TVs. Don't just let them watch and you know, depend on the TV completely. Um, it is widely known that, that the human connection is, is very important. Uh, it's, an, it's a very important element in children's language development. So I do recommend that you watch the programs with them, take interest in their cartoons, talk about the characters with them, you know, buy them toys uh, that are related. Uh, basically, you know, share this common interest with them. Uh, if you do that, I think the TV will, boo, will do wonders for their language development. Alrighty, if you want to see other Talking Head videos like this one, where I talk about various strategies we employ to raise our kids in different languages, please check out the playlist that you see over there in that corner. And if you'd like to see videos where my, my kids speak different languages, there's another uh, playlist right under this, this window. Uh, and uh, if you haven't already done so, please click on the big icon between the two windows below, where you can subscribe and follow our kids' language development. I'll see you in the next video.